This week, we've been looking at units of measure, being able to convert and order different units of measure. On the screen, you'll see the units of measure that we focused on. Why not pause the video and have a go at trying to fill in the blanks before I reveal the answers? So starting off with length, one centimetre is the same as 10 millimetres. One metre is the same as 100 centimetres. One kilometre is the same as 1,000 metres. One kilogram is the same as 1,000 grams. And there are 60 minutes in an hour, 24 hours in one day, and finally, there are seven days in one week. And to look at the capacity, we have a thousand milliliters in one liter. Use those facts to help you when we see the next few slides. Here we have some style questions that we've been looking at this week. It says sort in ascending order. Now we've spoken quite a lot about ascending and descending. Ascending means we order getting larger, descending means we get smaller. So we're gonna be ordering this from smallest to largest. Now you may well notice that some of them are in millimeters and some of them are in centimeters. So we need to convert them both to the same units. So I'm gonna convert my millimeters to centimeters. I know that there are 10 millimeters in one centimeter. So in 50 millimeters, there must be five centimeters. And with 45 millimeters, it must be 4.5 centimetres. And now I can order them because they are all in centimetres, ordering them from smallest to largest. So the smallest is four centimetres, then 4.5 centimetres, five centimetres, eight centimetres, and our largest of 10 centimetres. Why not have a go at this one? I will reveal the answer in just a second. So first step, as you may well see, I've converted them all to centimeters, which will make it a lot easier for me converting. So now I know that the smallest is 84 centimeters, then it's 99 centimeters, one meter or 100 centimeters, 120 centimeters, and then finally 7,000 or seven meters, or 70 meters in fact. In English this week, we've been having a look at one particular element of grammar, which is speech and using direct speech. In particular, using inverted commas. Direct speech is the exact word that means said by a person or a character. As you can see uh, with the example below, it is shown using inverted commas. So we know that Tommy said, I can't find the entrance, said Tommy trying to find the door. Now there are some key things that we must remember when using direct speech. We must have a 66 at the beginning of the speech of what the character is saying and a 99 when they stop talking. We must have a capital letter for the first word or first letter of the word um, in the speech. And we must have a piece of punctuation, whether it's a comma, an exclamation mark, or a question mark. And then 
At the end of the sentence, we must have a full stop. Now we can think of lots of different words that we could use instead of said that we've spoken about this week. And we may well use shouted. It may be that he whispered. Lots of different examples and you may want to come up with your own. So let's see if we can identify and see where the 66 and 99 and other bits go in this sentence. So it says, I think we should go inside, said Molly. So the bits that are said are, I think we should go inside. So I must make sure that I have a capital letter but for the first word and I'm going to put my 66 before I. I think we should go inside now. So my 99 needs to go after now. And I must have a piece of punctuation. I'm going to put a comma. And then at the end of the sentence, my full stop. I think we should go in now, said Molly. It could be that we may well improve it. It maybe could be bossed Molly. Here are some more examples. Why not have a go? And you'll see the examples on the screen with now the answers filled in.